Hello guys, my YouTube squad. Welcome back as always. I'm Dan at Trinkshu Repair and Key Shop. And today I have for you Multi-Job Bonanza Free, where I'm showing you the stuff I've had in through the week, all the weird different stuff, mashing it all together into a video to give you something a little different. And I can tell you we've got some nice Louboutins, some Disney shoes, some axes. So uh, hope you enjoy it. Keep watching to see what it's all about. Once again, welcome back. Now, the very first thing we're going to do is something that I've already got in, and we're going to kick it off with some axe sharpening. <laughs> so let me show you what we need to do. So with our axe sharpening, they're not just blunt, blunt, and need sharpening. They're actually dull, and the edges are rounded. So we need to create a new edge and then make it nice and sharp. So let's head over to the machine. Okay, there we go, done. Sharpie, sharpie. Sharper than a sharp thing from Sharp Town. Just giving a bit of a clean up as well. Very easy jobs, these take about five minutes, five pounds each for these jobs, ready to go back to the customer. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. Sleep all night and I work all day. All right, gang, rock and roll. So pretty cool job now. We've got these awesome suede Louboutin Chelsea boots with a chrome toe cap. All we're doing is that uh, the suede is dry and it's quite hard. So we're just gonna clean it up and try and recondition it. Uh, but I need the suede shampoo. So I'm just gonna ask Ron for the, Ron, can you go and get the suede shampoo? What do you mean is your day off? You booked it weeks ago. Well, that's fair enough, Ron. Don't worry, I'll get the shampoo. Okay, folks, so the way we're gonna approach this job to uh, clean and condition the suede, normally we'd use a spray-on foam shampoo. Today, I'm using the uh, Saphir suede shampoo, and the reason being is we mix this with water, it really soaks in, we're gonna let it dry for six hours, and that should, fingers crossed, help soften the suede, all right? So, what we do, got our bottle of detergent, what we need is a small dish of water, mix in some of the detergent, foam it up, all right, and then we're ready to go to work. So we're just gonna take our detergent and our suede brush and go to work. So we're just massaging the detergent in. Now before you panic, this is going to darken the suede. But uh, that's a good thing. It's just because it's getting wet, it's going to return to its original color once it's dry and hopefully nice and clean and nice and soft. to make sure we do is just get down in the seam here, the crack rather, between the uh, welt and the upper. Now I say welt, I couldn't even tell you if these are a welt to be honest, but one thing for sure is they have metal stitches, if we can call them stitches. Very interesting. I think I'm gonna give this toe plate a shine up as well before the customer comes to collect them. Okay, so now we're just gonna let that dry for uh, six hours, but uh, for a two-pronged attack to try and soften up these uppers, I don't think it's just the, the outer material. I also think it's the inners, which is leather. So what I'm going to do is take some stretching fluid and some leather conditioner, apply it both, and with any luck, that will help it really soften up on the inside. So I'm just gonna get it on a sponge, get it to the inside and just massage it into the upper lining. And then some of the, as usual, Woli Creme Essential. Okay, rock and roll. End of the day, these are dry and I think they look great and they actually feel softer, which is fantastic. Uh, now we're done with that job. Now, next job, a little bit unusual. We're heading out of the shop to go and help my dad with his jet engine. All right, so here we are in the garage with my dad, Perry, and the jet truck. Hi. What are we doing? 
Uh, today we are removing the afterburner from the turbine because it's got to go away down to Southampton to be repolished. First time to repolish it in four years. This is a big job and it has to be polished by hand and takes about three days to do. And it's very heavy, so Dan's helping me remove <laughs> it. So let's get on with it. Oh, I see. So there we go, it's off, ready to go to the metal polishers. And I'll tell you what, before we get out of here, I'm gonna show you a quick clip of the jet running. So yes, for our next job, we've got these fellows, or Bambi rather. So we've got Bambi chilled out, and then Bambi living her best life. Uh, uh, actually, I'm extremely confused right now. Is Bambi a boy or a girl? I can't remember. Uh, I'll be happily corrected in the comments. Let me know, guys. So anyway, they are pretty cool, Disney. Now the brand is Irregular Choice, and they do all sorts of shoes like this with cool designs on the bottom. So what we want to do is put on a clear sole guard so that the uh, so we can increase the longevity of the pattern whilst the lady's wearing them. So let me show you what we're going to do with them. But just before we move on, guys, I'm wearing my blue shirt by popular demand. A few of you have asked me to lose the red shirt, and do you know why I wear the red shirt a lot? I wear this shirt a lot whilst I'm working, but when I'm doing videos, I get a lot of problems with exposure sometimes, and my face will look bright white. It's just something to do with the different color balance, I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, it makes me feel like the video looks a little bit low quality, so that's why I tend to wear the red one when I'm shooting, but uh, I will make more of an effort. I personally like wearing my smart white shirt, but it gets filthy in about five minutes flat. Okay, so let me show y'all what we're gonna do. It's different from a normal stick-on sole, because we don't have a thick transparent rubber sole and even if we did we wouldn't be able to do it the same way where we would scour the surface and apply glue because well, I don't need to explain do we even if it was just the glue it's going to be very messy and ruin the look so what we do is use some kind of sheeting so what I've got today is just this from 3M seems to be the best stuff it is just a resin transparent shielding and that's going to do the trick for us okay so the first thing we're going to do is take our sheeting panel, put our shoe where we want it, and we're gonna line this up just so, so that we can get a rough template. All right, so our next step is we've got Bambi on our last, and I didn't show you the other one properly actually, did I? Thumper, see, I remembered Thumper's name. Thumper's definitely a boy, I'm sure. Anyway, what we need to do is prepare the surface with some rubbing alcohol. All right, so we're just gonna get a little bit of this. This is just gonna get rid of any dirt or grease that is going to cause a problem for our resin sheeting to apply. All right, so just work this in. Now, you know, I just wanna take a minute to ask you guys, is it just me or are Disney films terrifying. I mean, I just have some memories as a child of Disney films being very, very frightening, especially Peter Rabbit. Core oh, Peter Rabbit. All I remember is that bit where he's, uh, Peter's got his button stuck on the wire fence and he can't, he's wriggling, he can't get away and Mr. McGregor is running after him and all you can see is Mr. McGregor's feet and like a pitchfork stabbing down and Peter can't get away. I need to stop talking about it. Right now it's giving me the jitters. So once the rubbing alcohol has fully evaporated, we're gonna take our template, peel off the self-adhesive backing, and then we can uh, get to applying our sock. Okay, so we're just going to apply this the same as any other sole. So we're just gonna bring it down to the waist, 
and then just very evenly roll it on because any bubbles will show up like a sore thumb on this. He's trying to be a bubble there, but no, I'm not going to let him. And just bring it down to all of the edges neatly. All right, and the last little trick, we're just gonna hit it with a heat gun quickly, and this is gonna cause it to almost shrink wrap and just really tighten up. <whistles> Okie dokie, so now our protector is just at about 10 minutes to harden up. We're just gonna take a knife, trim around it, okay? Now, um, I think Ron's feeling a little bit sensitive at the minute. I think he feels like he's not the cutest thing in the shop right now uh, don't worry ron they'll be gone soon <whistles> you know it <laughs> my favorite disney film is robin hood i think my favorite character is the uh the king the lion oh i'm so confused is it even the prince or the king john the weedy one, anyway, the slimy weedy one. <laughs> My favorite bit is when he has, when Robin Hood uh, steals the rings off his fingers. He says, kiss the royal jewels. <laughs> and then Robin Hood sucks them all off. So I want to know, I genuinely want to know, what are your favorite Disney films? Old or new? Let me know in the comments. So there we are, job done. Invisible bizzle, you can barely see it. It's made them a bit more reflective. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And it's just going to protect the lovely pattern. So, job done. Hello again, guys, back in the shop. Another day, another dollar. And this job, another pair of lubes. These are beautiful calfskin Oxfords, brand new. Now, let's see how many people get triggered with this video. I hope not many. Okay, so for this job, this pair, they are brand new. However, the customer wants to put on our Caselli Red Mirror Soles, which are rubber. Now, uh, these are love-hate. Some people absolutely hate them. Some people love them. But uh, uh, the reason some people don't like them is that the shade of red is ever so slightly different from the lubes. But to be honest, from a cobbler's point of view, it's an incredibly close match. And what would you rather have? A worn-out sole that is patchy, torn, and you can see the leather color, or... A slightly different red sole you know I, I think it makes sense for these these are rubber also so once they're on they're going to stay red and stay grippy much 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 longer than the originals now before we start i will say i did recommend to the customer and it is my opinion that he should wear out the original shoe first get some use out of it enjoy the red the original red whilst it's there uh, however the customer wanted to go for these straight away to go for the extra the rubber the grip and the long life so this is uh, what the customer wants to do so we're going to do it so let's crack on all right all right so let's begin so we're going to get our shoe on our last it's nice and stable and then how do we start so we're going to take our caselli sole for the right shoe right as in left and right not correct <laughs> and we're going to bring it down as far as it'll go just until it gets to the logo. We don't want to cover the logo up. And then once I can see my uh, approach vector of our sole, let's just take it away and then come back with a firm ruler. Let's turn you that way. Okay. Right, I'm going to hold it in place and this is going to be our guide that I'm going to use to make a score mark. So I've just got my knife. And this is going to be a score mark and also our cut for our graph, where the sole's going to go up to. Very delicate on these. Don't want to go anywhere near the calf skin uppers with a blade. And once that's done, we're just going to come from the other side, cut from the other direction, and just make the tiniest little channel. And this is what we would normally do on the machine, create a line for the new sole to uh, nudge up against. But if we do it with a knife, we can get a much neater join so what we want to do on these we want to try and minimize the uh the look of the join between the two reds as much as possible all right rock and roll nice so now that we've got our precise little cut we need to head over to the machine and very gently sand the rest of the sole to remove the original paint and roughen up the surface of the lever so that the glue will adhere to it so that we end up 
with something like this. Am I still rolling? Yes, I am. Okay, guys, so this is where I'm up to. <laughs> Just roughed up the surface of the sole, ready for the contact adhesive. And the reason we rough it is so that we uh, roughen up the fibers so that the contact adhesive has something to stick, to, uh, grab to. Now, I'm just doing one shoot at a time so I can uh, save any mess. Nice, fresh brush so that we can do accurate gluing. So, let's get sticky. Hi there. How can I help? Good. Think got the dog tag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all done. There we are, one dog tag. Thank you. Okay, so once that's had five minutes to dry and go tacky, then what we're going to do is heat it up to activate the glue and stick it together. Now we're pressing these soles very gently. Okay, with shoe repairs there's always choices. Uh, and this choice right here is I didn't want to hammer it on just because I didn't want to mark the sole whatsoever. And chances are it wouldn't have, but you know, I just went to press. There we are. Okay, there we go. So our soles are on, nicely cut around, and to be honest, they're almost spot on. But just to make it uh, pristine, we're going to go around the edges, tidy up on the mini band, and then put some black edge dressing on it. Now, before anybody panics, I did say black. What I meant was dark brown. We're actually putting dark brown around here to obviously match the original shade. So there we go, job done. Caselli mirror soles on our lubes. I think they look smashing. Okay, right, let's move on. Now, next little job is not really a repair job or a job for you guys, but it's a job for me, just something I need to do. After all, this video is about showing you what I do in the shop. So I'm gonna show you down here. This is my key delivery that I've just had in. So obviously I do key cutting in the shop. This is uh, about a monthly order. This is about a month worth of keys. So these are blank keys ready to be hung up on the board. This is probably about three, 400 pounds worth of key blanks. All right guys, so let's talk about keys. When it comes to cutting keys, it's quite simple when you know how. We need to, so there's thousands of different key blanks, by the way, and your blank is essentially what it sounds like it's not cut. So there's two parts to make a key work. We have to have the right blank so that it will go in the hole in the door lock. And then we have to cut it so that it matches that particular lock. So first thing we need to do is find the blank. Now when we're putting our stock out, our keys all have numbers on them. So if I just open these, we're starting with the very simplest ones. This is the most common key you get here in the UK at least. These are one A's. Can I find here there? So we just find the one A spot on the board, which is right there under Yale. Get him on, and then we just go around and get all the other stock out. doing this 16 years sometimes I still can't find some there he is 
And I might as well show you these while we're here. We always have these colored fancy keys just for a bit of fun, you know, spice it up. We've got Chewbacca in the house there. I'm not doing my Chewy impression. Anyway, I've got keys to cut now actually. So that's it for the key stock and let's move on to something else. that job done that is the end of the video really hope you enjoyed it guys uh, just quick before you go I wanted to show you these and uh, just because unfortunately I didn't have time to shoot this job but we've got these lovely Italian Bagolis and they came out quite nice I think what do you reckon but yes that is the end of the video that was multi-job bonanza free really hope you enjoyed it let me know your thoughts um, hit like helps other people see this stuff and if you happen to be new to the channel welcome welcome aboard uh, subscribe I'm doing new videos every week if I'm not too busy and if you have a job that you want repairing, get in touch with us on the Trinity Repair Facebook page and we can talk about your job. But for now, I am out of here because me and my pal Jack are watching King Kong versus Godzilla. So until next time, thanks for watching and cheers.